Hello, welcome to the James Cooley Show. It's your life. I'm Dr. James C.C. Cooley, your host. And I tell you, I got an absolutely magnificent show prepared for you today. So I tell you, sit back, listen. If you want to be a part of the conversation, all you have to do is go to the comments. And because we got an absolutely fantastic guest, and you can ask her any question you want to. Or if you just want to, uh, to chime in, regardless of where you're watching it at, whether it's E360 TV, a YouTube channel, LinkedIn, Twitter, or over 25 plus other live streaming uh, networks. Hey, we're, we're glad to have you part of the conversation. You know, sometimes in life, we become our own worst enemy because we let things get in our head and we start locking in on doubt and we are, are start reading the narratives that we think that, uh, was written for us in our own minds and in order to get past that you have to refocus rewrite the narratives that you can that you can do anything you set your mind to if you put some thought in there and also you know collaborate you know reach out and ask for support ask for help you have to change the narrative that you have set in your mind that's one thing we're going to talk about today. But before we get off into that, I, I I have to bring my absolutely wonderful executive producer and co-host, uh, Dr. Michelle Cooley. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Doing great. It's a it's a beautiful day. It's like 40 something degrees here in Fort Worth, Texas, but it, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's, uh, I know we're going through a, a major shift in the next couple of days around the United States for us, uh, freezing temperatures and doesn't regard, doesn't matter where you at, you know, so it's coming. But yeah, what you think about sometimes people get locked in on, on the negativity in their minds and, uh, then they're, they find themselves not wanting to move forward because that's what they locked into. What, what are your thoughts on that? I think people sometimes, some people, not all, some people, they're so used to negative thoughts or a negative narrative in their mind that either they don't know how to get out of that, or maybe they're comfortable in that. But, you know, you ask yourself, who wants to be miserable? Who wants to always think a negativity in their mind? Um, not to say challenges don't happen, but... Are you going to stay at the place where you are? Or are you going to do something to get out of it? And, and you're absolutely right, because uh, you cannot create opportunities for yourself if you still stuck on yesterday or last week or what somebody thinking about you. So our guest today, I cannot wait to get this started. I cannot wait to introduce uh, this absolutely fantastic guest. And, and Michelle, uh, I'm, uh, can you go ahead and do the honors? Because... I think our, our viewers and our listeners are saying, come on, it's time, it's time, it's time. <laughs> so, Michelle, this, uh, why don't you introduce the title of the show, Purpose, and, and the guest. Yes, the title of the show today is Changing the Narrative, Creating Your Own Opportunity. And the purpose is getting to know the background of the Presidential Lifetime Achievement Award recipient, recipient of the Honorary Doctorate from TIUA School of Business, Entrepreneurship and Business, founder and executive director of an economic empowerment and educational nonprofit organization called, and I forgive me if I butcher this name, Watati Academy, renowned international moxie motivational speaker, author, publisher, entrepreneur, and Gambian goodwill ambassador, Dr. Margaret Derecki. And we're going to talk about this, um, turning adversities into achievements and why you must have uncommon courage and taking charge and shifting your mindset proactively. So let me tell you a little bit about our guest today. Ambassador Dr. Margaret Derecki is the founder and executive director of Watati Academy, is located at and in partnership with Nyamburu Cultural Center, University of Maryland. She's a renowned international moxie motivational speaker, Washington Post entrepreneur, publisher, and author of several personal and business development books. As a result of her humanitarian and philanthropic work in Gambia and around the world, she was appointed Gambian Goodwill Ambassador in 2016. Her mission is to pursue her vision and passion of helping people realize their dreams uh, through the academy programs and to be change the world, change she would like to see in the world through education and economic empowerment and emancipation. 
Margaret would be the first to tell you that the benefit of going through a challenge or adversity in life is that you can use that to experience to help others. The James Cooley Show welcomes Ambassador Dr. Margaret Derricky to the show. How you doing? How you doing, Ambassador Dr. Derricky? How you Thank doing? Thank you today? so much. I was wondering who you guys were talking about, right, for a second. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. It's really an honor to be with you and your beautiful um, sister, Michelle. Wow, you know, we uh, we're so uh, happy to have you on the show and uh, multifaceted and all the great things that you're doing, not just in the United States, but around the world and especially uh, over in the motherland. You know, one of these days I'm going to get over there. (laughs) Consider it done. Whatever you envision and think you believe you walk towards, it happens. Oh, yeah. Hey, Dr. Director, can you tell our our viewers and our listeners a little bit about you, where you grew up, and uh, how did your your family inspire you to be the person that you are today? Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, I first of all want to thank you for your service, and I thank you for um, making sure that you don't just live for you and your beautiful family, that you want to do things for other people. I love the name of your, your show. It is your life. Therefore, take charge of it, right? So uh, briefly, and I will interject some of my life story or work as uh, as have the conversation this afternoon. But briefly, I was born in Nigeria, um, came to America years ago, like in the early 80s, to go to Howard. I graduated from Howard. Um, this is just, my life is so expensive, so I'm just going to give it really short. 86, went on to law school. I have a Jewish doctorate degree in law as well from American University, Washington College of Law. And I was told that all I needed was to get all this degree and then the life will be for mine to have. But I found that not to be true, that education is one, one, one of the levers that we need in this world, that we needed to be taught the essence of practical knowledge of the thing that we need to know so that we can begin to think on how we can create our own opportunities. I'm talking about in the economic world. And I often found that most of our students I just thought to go get a degree, go get a job. So we want to change that narrative. Those years are gone. You can see what technology is doing. So we can't do that anymore. That's really the essence of the foundation of WITATI. WITATI stands for we're empowered to achieve the impossible. And every one of us can. And then lo and behold, years went on. Uh, I was falling all over the place in the gutter, trying to get up, trying to wash it off, and I fall again. But you see, those are the the times that prepared me to become this person. In 86, I got married to my best friend. John Durecki. That's why when I look at you and your wife, you're like, you guys remind me of my boo, John Durecki. He, I am actually his ministry. That that much I can tell you if, if you get what that means. And everything as you could imagine was happening, but not to us, but against us. But we know, even the Bible said that those, the, how they're united, really, right? They can, there's nothing anyone can do against them. So long story short, with three daughters in tow, then I went through a terrible thing in the eyes of man at the time. As a, as a matter of fact, I've been made an offer to put a book together. And they're like, don't go to, don't say that because you want to take it to another level. But because I've been through a whole lot of stuff in my life, I have enough experientially that I can empower and inspire anyone that is listening to me right now on whatever the problem may be or isn't. Oftentimes we tell ourselves the stories that we think we want to hold on to. And often we're fighting for the life we don't want instead of fighting to us, holding back to what is really hurting us because you know why? What is familiar oftentimes seems to be what we think we need to hold on to. But I'm here to share that uh, that mindset because it can, it it doesn't have to be that way. You know why? I've been there and done that. And you cannot minister where you haven't bled. So let's do this. Wow. I mean, you mentioned a couple of things, uh, I mean, a whole lot of things in there, but uh... Uh, you mentioned, uh, first of all, you, you have to understand that you can. You can do anything you set your mind to. Secondly, uh, yeah, we, 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 we sometimes think that through education, uh, that's all we need. Uh, it's, uh, education is great. I mean, I went to that's school right. like, like 30, 40 years of my life. You know, so I, I know, but that's not the only thing uh, that's, that's going to get you there. You know, uh, developing common sense and developing uh, a way to share uh, what you have learned and also uh, develop processes and understanding. So you're able to utilize uh, what you have learned uh, from a formal perspective and a lifetime perspective into uh, developing yourself and helping others. 
those are, I believe, especially given to others, is the most important things that uh, I believe that uh, we we can do on this earth. Totally. I totally agree with you. Oftentimes, a lot of times our background is true, does tend to shape us. But I know for a fact, from my own personal experience and the journey, the hard, the hard places I've been, the fallings I've done, the only thing is that my, my head didn't crack open, really. <laughs> we, we tend to think that it was supposed to kind of put a nail on the coffin of our lives. Not at all. You see, because the hard places of our life actually is where our destiny is tied. If we know how to unwrap that difficulty and find a silver lining. My success today came from those places, not the, not the pleasant places at all. And I want to help somebody today who is sitting and feeling sorry for themselves. Nothing was handed to me, not, not my father, not my mom, because I know the power of the mind. I know not, not insisting for the, for the sweet things in life. Because you see, if you're not able to achieve the things, people will say, wow, you have not really achieved anything that is of magnitude proportion. In, in, in the context of this interview, I hope I'll be able to explain what that is. And it's not really for the world, even for yourself, right? And, and if you are wanting, a lot of people want to wait until something clears. So what is an opportunity? Is where others will say, not for me. You're like, oh, okay. It's a lot of dirt in there. It's a lot of nails and torn, but that's where it is. Be willing to go well, that's what said, not for me. You're Be willing absolutely. to change your story from what you've always told yourself. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and please don't misunderstand me, right? I'm not trying to minimize the trauma the rejection, the disappointment, the discomfort, or the evil things we've done against one another. Not at all. But I'm saying to you and everyone that is listening to me is that in spite of those, you have the power to change your narrative. The question, do you know how? And are you willing to participate in your own rescue? And no one is going to do it for you. Or do you want to be comfortably miserable for the rest of your life and complain? Guess what? When you complain, nobody cares. Even if they care, they got their own issues. You got to pick yourself back up, look for support. Let, let me just let you get in the work because I'll talk from night to tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, you, you're absolutely right. You have to pick yourself up. And and I, I, I just love how you said that uh, you really find, you find your way in dark places because you, you're looking for the light. I mean, sure. we, we should be looking for the light. And, and a lot of times it's... Uh, I believe that God put us in dark places yeah. and he tests us to try yeah. us to see, yeah. or are we willing, are we willing to hunt and dig and, and search for the light? You know, I tell you, we got to take a station break, but yeah. I, I cannot wait to get back to uh, pick up this conversation. If you want to be part of the conversation, all you have to do is just uh, go to the comments, Give screen your authorize them to use your uh, Facebook uh, photo or whatever that is. And you can ask uh, uh, the ambassador, the doctor, any question that you want. Y'all take. We'll be back shortly after break. I'm Dr. James J. C. Cooley. See you after break.
Hopefully, you know, there is no bad decision unless there is no plan. Create, collaborate, commit with confidence. Commit with what? Confidence. Commit with what? And everything that you do. Hello. Welcome back to the James Cooley Show. I'm Dr. James J.C. Cooley, and, and we got the ambassador, Dr. Margaret. Uh, I mean, I tell you, and, and, and she is bringing it already. I mean, uh, you know, I, I almost did not want to take the break. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was listening, you know, so. And we also uh, got another uh, a friend of ours going to join us in a minute. Uh, that's uh, Dr. Dr. Hall, and you'll get a chance to meet him as well. You know, so, uh, but I want to pick it up. I want to pick it up uh, uh, where we left off at and where you were saying that uh, uh, most of the time when we're looking for a validation, we're looking for certain things and we, we think that we're going to find all these things in the light. I want to go back to the dark uh, and, and pick that up. And I, I want you to explain uh, in, in a little bit more detail that. Uh, everything that looked good is not good and everything that you're seeking for sometimes we seek the wrong things you know mm -hmm. so can you, can you pick that up a little bit sure i want to even kind of pull it back a little bit so this change of narrative is not solely when you experience something negative necessarily it could also be you've been in this kind of a job right for 25 years and you've only gotten two or three promotions that you could even use to send your kids to school. But you keep saying, oh, you know, well, I've been here for a long time. I'm too old. I can't do this. And that's what you're telling yourself, right? That's not true that because you're now 40 years old or whatever the number of years God has given you, that you can change that. The question is, are you willing to change what you're telling yourself and perhaps say, what other talents do I have? Can I source my talent elsewhere so I can earn another $10,000 a year. Maybe by telling yourself what is good, what is what is feasible, what is noteworthy, what is great, what is good, you begin to take it into your subconsciousness to believe that you can do more than where you are. So it's not every time that the change of narrative only works when you're telling yourself something negative. It can be sitting in the same rut, the same kind of place that Oh, I can't do any better. Maybe this is all, all there is to life. So I just wanted to say that. And you say to yourself, well, I'm going to change it. And that's the story of my life. I was actually doing very well in a certain company at a certain time. I was making good money. And I sat down one day. I wasn't, at that point, I have already gotten out of the valley, by the way. Okay? But it was in the valley that God spoke to me and gave me my assignment. So if you want to get your assignment, be ready to get disappointed. Because the word disappointment is a compound word. With the dis, when you remove it, it becomes an appointment. So I got my separated while I was in the valley. Yeah, right? So, so you have to be able to tell yourself that you want to do better. You want to tell yourself, rewrite what you've been telling yourself, why you're not able, you're not good enough, because somebody laughed at you the first time you said you're going to start a business. That must, but you have a comfortable job. But inside of you, because of what you've been telling yourself, you weren't able to move forward. But let's let me now focus more on the part that a lot of people tend to hold on to, which is the negative, the bad things that happen to us, the things that nobody else even cared to know about. We go to sleep, we can't sleep because we can't even get the nerves to share it with somebody else. So what do you do? You see, the the things people say to you is not as harmful to you as what you say to yourself to be honest. And no one can stop you but yourself. See, if you focus on, and, and what I find even as adult, uh, Brother Jim, we are still little five years, six old, you know, in big bodies. We're still afraid of who's going to laugh at us. We're still afraid who's going to say the kind of car we drive where we live. When that has nothing to do 
with the person that God gave birth to, with the gift God is giving you. Because here's my gift to each and every one of the folks who happen to be listening to me. The moment you can trust yourself, you will know how to lead in this world. The moment you believe in your authentic self, because you see, and be willing to be vulnerable because your value is tied to your vulnerability. But we think someone else is going to laugh at me, but go and bring it on. The more you laugh, the more you laugh at me, the stronger I get, the more I'm walking towards my, because now I'm free from shame. Because I'm free from those they, they are going to say. Because to be independent of public opinion is the very first condition to achieving anything great. I think I read that some ways. I'm not the author, but it just came to mind, right? So the minute you're able to separate yourself from what other people are going to say about you, because they don't matter. They didn't, at the end of the day, they don't pay your bills. They don't, they, they don't even matter in your life. So I'm saying to every one of you who's listening to me is, don't always think they are better. Whoever the day are, I'm yet to meet the Joneses. I really, I don't even know if I want to meet them, but they will not mean anything to me, right? So, bro, 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 Jim, if you show me someone who has gone through experience, who have gone through so much, they have the experience and the courage and the wisdom that I'm looking for to help me navigate and take my life to the next level. If I don't change what I've been saying to myself, let me use myself for an example right here. For a long time, it's like, why me, God? When God went, there's really nothing is working. And I was talking to a sister one who said, well, girl, if, if you weren't a Christian, I would throw somebody did voodoo on you. <laughs> oh my God, you have no idea because nothing was moving around. <laughs> I don't know because I laugh for no reason. <laughs> Sorry about that. So, and but I, I, I say to her, I quickly had to pull myself together. I said, No, I'm a Christian. No voodoo in this world is going to reach, is going to touch me. I just need to rewrite what I'm saying to myself and refocus on how I'm going to. Because the ability for me to go back and look at where I came from, what happened to me, what didn't happen, what role did I play in it or didn't, and whoever did or didn't do anything, that's on them. I need to pick me up right now because God is no respecter of persons. And the secret of success, whether you're selling orange and apple, are one and the same. All I need to do is understand the process. Be willing to pay the dues, sacrifice, because without change, there's no. There will never be change. Without change, there will be no. no, no without challenge, there will be no change. And without sacrifice, there will no change. I embodied those and sat in the rut for years, working and praying until God made a way. So I'm gonna shut up and let my brother Eric take it from here, whoever. But I don't get so passionate about this because I know we can change a lot of lives. We don't need to give them money. We need to give them the freedom and the tools to pick up from where they came. Wow. You know, I, I want to bring uh, Dr. Dr. Eric uh, Hall in, into the mix. Uh, Doc, I know you've been listening to the whole conversation that we had. And, and I tell you, the ambassador is bringing it. And uh, what she just said about uh, people out there sitting back worrying about what people say and think about them. And that's going to control their destiny because that's what they think um what are your thoughts on on, on that on that point well yeah thank you um, pleasure to meet you ambassador i am sitting here with goosebumps on my arms uh just thinking about everything you just said and this so and the passion is is necessary it's a requirement yeah. for us to be tied to our anchor and to have the ability to galvanize and and move the needle changing the narrative and rewriting our story instead of playing with his story. You know, it's important. You said a lot of things. And when God is in your life, you know, the most high God, you know, yes, the one is. that died up on the cross and was raised again in three days with all the power. It is important that we speak and understand that who he created us to be is greater than where we are in most cases. And like you said, when you're speaking truth and recognize truth in your position, it has nothing to do. I have yet to meet the Joneses myself. So I, <laughs> I, I love all that. And I'm always asking, who are they? You know, because they say this and they say that, you know. And so, you know, people like you and I, and we, 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 we understand the calling and the giftings and we just go do because we understand obedience is better than sacrifice and twice on Sunday, you know? Yeah. And so at the end of the day, you know, I, I'm loving the conversation, you know, I'm loving the direction. I believe that there's some synergy and things that we're doing with the protocols and, you know, the free trade continental free trade agreement in Africa, sure. and then just bridging the gap 
on being able to retie our brothers and sisters of the African diaspora to the anchor. You know, Mother Africa is calling all her children globally, and that's where the power truly comes together. Right. There's three billion of us when we do it. So it's important that these calls and these stories and these messages get out there. If you've been watching the the, the 49 Union member heads of state, yeah, the, I have. you know, and it's a, it's a travesty that America still doesn't get it. She's doing what she's been doing forever, dangling the carrot. You know, and 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 Africa wants America to be that united front of partnership for a while. But China's in there with two hundred and eighty billion dollars that they've already invested in the land, and United States is at sixty. So even with their fifty-five, you know, billion dollar pirate that they're dangling now, it doesn't move the needle to even compete. You know, the seat at the table is not what we need. Africa needs to understand we don't need anything from the outside world. She has everything that she needs right there. And all we have to do is bring the brain trust back to Africa and create the Africa we want. Agenda 2063 is here for us. We're the sixth region, part of the diaspora. And all we got to do is grab a hold and forge this thing forward. So thank you for your mission and what you're doing. Thank you so much. You know what's so funny? God is so funny. And he's the master weaver, right? And when he's in the process of weaving, the faint at heart wouldn't see, they wouldn't get it. They're quick to, right? Absolutely. So you just said something about bring a seat to the table. Uh, and I saw Dr. say, you know, what she just shared. We have an annual entrepreneurship uh, convention and scholarship and awards gala every year at University of Maryland College Park where this organization is housed. Next year, our theme is creating a seat and a table. Here's what mm. I mean. Gone are the days of where we're gonna bring our, our chair to the table. No, we have earned it. We have surpassed that. Now we wanna be the one to create and be the table. Bring the, so we wanna be the one to create a seat and a table. That is so yesterday. And we can only do it when we come together. If that's the theme of our conference next year, our convention and gala, and I'm inviting you guys to come. The time is now, you said Mother Africa, it's time for her to take it as glory, right? Because you see, you no one can do for you what only you can do for yourself, but you cannot do it without support. Like you said, they can reach out here and there to get the support, but it's incumbent upon us, meaning black folks in the world, to build our own. That's why when I talk about changing the narrative, creating your own opportunity in the marketplace, is that we need to stop thinking like we can only be employed by somebody. Who the heck are they? They don't have forehead. I don't care what anybody said. We need to begin. Don't let me say the wrong thing on this place. <laughs> what we've not been given is the opportunity and be told that we're so That's why I love Dr. Moher saying that. I know a lot of us are able and we can do so much, but they dismiss our abilities. They dismiss the hard work like we don't matter just right. because nobody has nobody has a care to recognize it. But the hour is now. We're yeah. going to do this in a way methodically, patiently, because I don't believe in doing anything in a hurry. It took me years of sitting in my basement for years, refused to go get a job. I, there was a time, and, you know, I mean, I talk all day long. There was a time I, I forgot people got paid every two weeks because I was convicted in my conviction that the path I'm going to take may take me years. But if I hold on to his name, that he will, he will create a path. That's why I'm getting calls all over. But many people look and they're like, how can you not get it? There was a, I only thought about hey, money when I had to go, go grocery shopping. That's when I thought about money. That's how convicted. But you see how awesome a God he is. When he's ready and he's seeing your faithfulness and your commitment and what you have done, he is like a tsunami where you can even, even, even and those people who thought um, they were going with the Joneses, they're aging so badly. Trust me, I'm not passing the joint. I'm just telling you my story. The power to hold your own and believe in yourself when nobody believes in you. If you know who you are and what it is you've been called to do, even with no means in sight, just stay true to it because you are the asset and not the money. So 2023, we're going to be creating the seed and the table. Absolutely. And that will be the, the new, new narrative we're going into 2023. Absolutely. Seat Absolutely. at the table. We're going to take a station break, but this is uh, this is so powerful <laughs> right now. And I, I can't stop laughing. Laughing is for the good. <laughs> because and I, and I and I love I love the narrative uh, 
a seat at the table because we should have been at the table a long time ago. No, we and we, 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 we we are the table. People are we are the table. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Hall. Yeah, you got it. We don't right. want to be at their table yeah, anymore. Right. No, no, that's, I'm that, that that's table. so old and so passe. But I know you got to go we're on the station break. Let's get back because we got fired. We're fired up now. <laughs> we fired up, so we're gonna take a station <laughs> Thank break. Thank you, Dr. Angela. Nice to see. You. If you want yes, to Dr. A. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Hall, for getting it. We are not on the table. We creating the seat ourselves. Tired of making it and excuses and being displaced like you don't matter. No one is smarter than us. We just need to come together in unity. We, 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 we have to take, save all these thoughts after the break. <laughs> one love. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Dingley here, producer of The James Cooley Show, It's Your Life. And the new audio version of James' book, Country Boy, City Boy, A Journey That Ain't Over Yet, is a must-have. James shares his true life story of struggle and success in America. It's both a cautionary tale and a roadmap to achieving the American dream. Get the new audio version of Country Boy, City Boy, A Journey That Ain't Over Yet, by James Cooley on Amazon.com or wherever audiobooks are sold. Hello. Hey, I'm James Cooley. I am the founder and CEO of the J.C. Cooley Foundation, Options Opportunity Slash the Choice Program. Our primary mission is to help build the foundation of our youth and young adults and communities. And we encourage everyone to dream big, think big, and be big at everything you do. And the way that you do that is, first of all, you got to believe in yourself. You have to believe in yourself. You have to know that you are here for a purpose. You also have to be able to step out your comfort zone and do things that you that you probably didn't think that you can do. Hello, welcome back to the James Cooley Show. It's your life. And you know, uh, I was so excited during the break. I'm, or actually, I was ecstatic prior to the break. Uh, but extremely excited during the break that um, I cannot wait uh, to pick this up. Uh, I cannot wait to pick it up. And, and I tell you what, uh, wherever you're watching this at, whether it's on E360 TV, YouTube, wherever it's at, you can be part of this conversation. You can be, you can be part of the conversation. I hit you with the send uh, your question in, and I, I make sure that we get it up there. And uh, wow. You know, at Dr. Hall, now you was getting ready to. Uh, say something actually both of you guys were just going back and forth and we were trying to we were trying to get a break in there but uh <laughs> now, now, we, we back we back on there now so we can pick it up yeah yes sir um, yes sir i uh, you know it, there's a lot of of joy when you understand whose you are and she spoke to the magnitude of uh you know changing the narrative it, uh, all this stuff these con these conversations are um, as as much as they're very much needed, they're so passe when it comes down to when we truly uncover who we are and speak in truth. And the world is knowing that. That's why uh, everybody's running after Africa or, or, or a Kubalan, if we're going to get real personal, because, you know, all these colonizer kind of concepts and all these things that's happening there is the gig is up now. You know, the truth is being exposed. God is revealing who the remnant people are. You know, a Kubalan is where is what the name is of the land of humanity. And I'm not sure if we're still on now because I look like a, we lost everybody. But um, 
I just, yeah, yeah, I, saying, I just gave you the big screen. That's all. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, so, but uh, you know, and as we speak though, you know, you know, seat at the table and all this, uh, man, whose table and, and, you know, why are we being invited to somebody else's table when the table and the, the land of uh, humanity begins on Kubalan, what we know today as Africa. So changing our dialogue, changing the mindset, bringing the brain trust back to where it was originally, you know, started from, you know, being tied to our anchor is everything, every important. We're the only people on the planet, on the planet. You hear me? The planet, not just a USA, the planet that's not Mm -hmm. tied to our anchor. How is that? Mm-hmm. And that's because Plymouth Rock landed on us, right? It ain't like yeah. the lies that have been told. Christopher Columbus yeah. discovered America yeah. and all this mm-hmm. other stuff, man. We we know mm-hmm. in the truth, but it's mm-hmm. written in history and that, that continues to be taught. So until we educate our people about our story, the destination and destiny that people keep so calling themselves to get to, the destiny is now. The time is now. The great shift in the atmosphere is now, you know, the book, good book that's written that been tampered with, as we know, and all that good stuff. The, the word of God is unchanging yesterday, today and forever. And no matter who adds to the word of God, they, they man, it's already predestined what's going to happen. So at the end of the day, all we got to do is look forward and march forward to the calling that God put on our life. And listen, the provisions already there. He's waiting for us to grab hold to that and walk into that truth. And everything you need is already laid out. We're, there's no France. There's no other countries without Africa. France takes $500 billion annually. So now imagine Africa waking up and say, no longer, no more. And I, we won't even be able to talk about a France. And that's where the world stage is at. That's why everybody's rushing there now to try to stake their claim. And all we got to do is wake up the sleeping giant. And baby, it's, it's another story now at the table. When we be talking about a chair at the table, man, folks, I, listen, in, in Africa, our heart as Africans is so generous that we will allow the world, in spite of what they've done to us, yeah. through the atrocities and the systemic racism and all these other stuff. How can we talk anti-Semitic and when we're the original Jews? Don't, nobody wants to hear these conversations because everything ain't for everybody. But anyway, I don't want to go on about those things and mess around and get us kicked off of TV. So let's keep on going where we're going. Okay, Ambassador, I'm turning it back over to you. Uh, this is so powerful. Uh, you got it. So it's um it's it's kind of kind of like oh my god, the sentiments, the ideas, the notion, the narrative, the stories we're sharing right now is so much in sync with my belief system that only God could have put this together. Because see, it is very hard to talk about Africa sometimes in America, because oftentimes. It's like, oh, you know, what is over there? And the same people that are telling you what is over there are already there taking and looting everything that belongs to Africa. You see, but until we begin to tell ourselves that black is beautiful, not just when I put on my little pancake on my face or what have you, it's the way we relate to the story of Africa. And are we going to rise up as a people to fight for it so that we can get what belongs to us? You see, the thing is, again, changing that narrative is that we have also bought into the narrative that the media, whoever shares to us in America and elsewhere, that there's nothing good about Africa. And yet they go to Africa and take everything else. But then you don't blame them. Remember when I talked about it doesn't matter whose fault it was. At this point, we cannot continue to point the finger. So when our black folks all over the world are going to come for good and stop being greedy and taking what doesn't belong to them or doing all the wrong things so that we can save one child at a time. As far as I'm concerned, Africa is so wealthy that no child in Africa should die of hunger or be or go to bed hungry at night. But it will not happen until we change the story we're telling ourselves as to who is in power, who has the power, what we're going to do as a people. But if we on this forum and those who can hear our voice clearly are beginning or begin to share the power and the importance of embracing who we are, 
because you see, at sometimes some people say, "Well, I'm not, I'm not African, I'm not." But if you if you have this color, me, I don't care what you want to call yourself. You are, even if you deny yourself to say that, right? right. Unless you have some other pigmentation. But if I'm looking at you guys right now, mm -hmm, that's what it is. <laughs> can we embrace it and agree that's what it is? And what is wrong about it that we can change so that we can own? We are entitled to what belongs to Africa, but we have to be willing to invest in it and not let these other people tell us the narrative they want us to embrace. Some people have the guts to say to me, oh, wow, so um, what kind of heart you guys live in Africa? And you show them the photo of your home and they're like, no, that cannot be Nigeria, that cannot be over here because that's not what we see on television. So again, who is changing and creating that narrative? But it's not going to change until some of it. But you know what I want to tell you guys? The path to what is good often is very, very, very tight. And it's often the least resistance. And most people don't want to take it. It's like, not for me. But if a few of us are bold, and, are bold enough to say, I'm going to live for this and bring other people. I remember when I started my journey, a lot of people looked at me like I was crazy. Now they're trying to figure out how they should do it. But because I believe, you have to first believe, right? You have to believe. You have to think, believe, act, and grow rich. It's, it's one of my books here. I have written a lot of books. You have to be able to stand with a few people who have the same belief system. You can never find me in the corridors of confusion or people who are gossiping and because it's the least that they can do and their life is going back down. And please forgive me, I'm not speaking in judgment. I am just telling you what I know that works until we come together as one. Some people are gonna resist it because it's been painted with darkness. But if a few of us wanna own it and begin to clean it up, move about it the right way, others will say, can I come in? Can I be a part of this? And that's how we can begin to change that narrative. Because the riches of the world, talk about China being there, as much as they're doing all that investment, they're equally taking almost everything that belongs to Africa too. So let's call it spade a spade. I'm not in politics, but I tell the truth because that's what God put in my heart to say. So when are we going to, are we going to sit on the side and talk about it when it's all said and done, then we show up and complain because that's what they call us. Like, oh, black people keep complaining, da, da, da. No, those years of complaining is so yesterday. It has to be those of us who are willing to work hard. You see, if you're not, if, we, if you believe in small, you don't want to work hard, but you want everything in the world. I'm telling you, get out of my face. You have to be willing to work hard. Stay firstly, find other people who believe in you. I don't like lazy people. I don't like people who just sit and complain. Show me a problem and let's figure out a way we're going to solve it. So together we can change that narrative. Whether it's wealth building in the family, if you want to change the wealth building in your family, you need to at some point say, this job, I've been doing this for 50 years, I can't even buy my gas. Well, maybe it's time for you to think about what you can do. How do you raise a kid who's going to be a wealth builder? Is to show the kid that you two can create something from nothing. So let me, I, I, I'm, I'm going to let you guys have it right here, but you know, because I can keep going, because I'm very passionate about this. And I've done this successfully. I've helped a lot of people start and succeed their own businesses. And I created everything from scratch. Nothing was... I mean, how do you go from having a B in political science, Jewish doctorate degree in law, and being an entrepreneur at the level I've done it? Not to treat my own horn, but to say that if you can think it and you believe it and you're willing to work hard, and you, you get up five in the morning, you're not trying to snow at three o'clock when you should be thinking and praying, <laughs> you can do anything, right? Amen, amen, <laughs> right? amen. Uh, amen, Pastor. <laughs> oh, no, no. <laughs> you just said it before. So, wait, where are you a minister? I said, I'm a minister of God. I'm a that's right. And that's all. Because the moment we take off these labels and, 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 and start living in the bigness of God, things start to happen. And it, it really is it, the paradigm shift is upon us for a time such as this. This, this is This is beyond powerful, this is beyond more than needed. People need to see this on every platform and every globe to, to galvanize the, the pilgrimage back home. And it doesn't say that you got to get up and leave here. And the, the great exodus, though, I think is upon us, too. You know, when we can actually understand the narrative that we're rewriting our history to be able to tell what the truth is of the world. Humanity is is, is being uncovered now. And God is exposing it for a time such as this for great warriors like you, Ambassador Dr. Cooley. You know, uh, you you've been hearing me behind the scenes for the last five months, just kind of telling you that these things are necessary. It's, it's not right now. I can grab fifty African Americans and ask them where they're from in Africa, and it's a travesty of the answers I get. And we say uh, jokingly, I, I get all this. You know, if I say I was going to Europe. 
or I'm going to, you know, somewhere else. They go, oh, I wish I can go. I say, yeah. I'm going to Africa. And they go, man, I, I'm going to pray for you. Yeah, you know, that's right. And those are the things we got to change, because when I can show you in, in different countries of Africa that I've explored since 2005, that I can show you at Beverly Hills, I can yeah. show you a New York City, I can show you a San Francisco, I can show you a San Diego. You can get name any great Metroplex and I can show you that in Africa and beyond. You know, so I, I'm, I'm all done with trying to convince people about Africa. Yeah. I'm looking for those that's going to line up because iron sharpens iron. Yeah. So you're gonna be about, you're gonna be about it. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta be, be about, about it. it. You gotta you know, be I've about I've been it. blessed and fortunate to be an ambassador, goodwill ambassador in several countries in Africa. And it's because mm -hmm. we move the needle and we do things. I'm low hanging fruit, you know? So the work that we're doing and being boots on the ground, they speak for themselves. Yeah. And so I, I appreciate your invite to your, 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 your thing coming up. I would love to yeah. get that information. And in return, sure. I want to invite you to our African linked event, honors event that we're having uh, coming up in April in, in Dallas, Texas. So okay, I'll let sure. you get me for that information regarding that too. But uh, Doc, I'm sorry. Okay. We, we ain't trying well, to take well, over your show, Doc. No, no, no. no. We, 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 we gotta take we need our own show. We need our own reality show. Hey, we got to take a station break. We got to take a station break. And we're going to come back after the break and pick it up. So I'll tell you what, if you want to be part of the conversation, you know, join in right after the break. It's your life. I'm Dr. James J.C. Cool to see you short. Hello, welcome back to the James Cooley Show with your life. This, what well, you're talking about excitement. This is beyond excitement. <laughs> um, wow. It says, uh, I just want everybody to know I'm blown away uh, with uh, both of these great doctors right here, you know, sharing uh, their, their stories and their ideals. Uh, and uh, the ambassador here, wow. When, when, when she go on the road, she go on the road. <laughs> and there is no stopping her at all and but everything is absolutely wonderful you know so uh uh we we left off at we're talking about uh, the events that are coming up and dr hall you were telling them about our event that's coming up in april in dallas want to touch base on that again and i also want to uh uh pick it up uh, uh with you as well uh uh, uh dr directly about your event uh, i know you 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 spoke real fast about it, uh, but uh, I want to know a little bit more in detail of what's going on. Sure. Thank you so much. Um, I've been at this for so long. I've been an international motivational speaker here, Blacks in government, all over the FBI. I've been around, written so many books on the empowerment. And my time is now. I mean that I, for years, God just told me to shut up and sit down and build for his people. So all I need now is opportunity to um, kind of help a lot of people get up, you know, because complaining is not going to do it. It doesn't mean you shouldn't complain. But I know for a fact that um, regardless, even in death, I, I see opportunity, you know. That sounds weird, but I don't have the time to explain what I mean by that, right? So we have this program. Uh, I, I wear two, two men hat, hats. 
the the nonprofit, which is my gift to the world, which is the Wutachi Academy. And I've seen in Buru Culture Center, just give a little shout out, so they're watching too. Uh, uh, we've been here at the Nimbru Culture Center, University of Maryland College Park for the last 10 years. It will change a lot of lives. Students graduating and going to, starting their own business successfully, not looking for a job. That's a fact. So that's what we have. Every year we have the, conven the entrepreneurship convention, which is the 10th of June, right? And then the 17th is the awards gala, scholarship and awards gala, where we bring people nationally and internationally. And to acknowledge what we've done, have the conversation. So the theme is what I shared with you guys earlier. The theme for next year is like creating a seat and a table. We're not dragging any chair to anybody's table. We're gonna be the one to create it in that. So we are looking to uh, partner room with folks like you guys so that we can bring people to come to that event. We're trying to get some, some major people to speak and what have you. We have a program already, but it's not complete. We need your support. We need you all to come so we can have this conversation. And Dr. Hall, and then both of us, we can have a conversation how that's going to be. Because until we bring our people to show up where the conversation is different from what they've heard before, you cannot change a person until you change their perception and their mindset, right? So it is important to begin to bring us to that kind of place where you see somebody who did it from that. They did that, so I can do that. Oh, okay, so people in Africa don't eat a plantain for lunch or whatever the point is. So that means they're human beings too. We alone can change our narrative. So if we can talk about it maybe off here, for those who want to know more, they can go to wetatiacademy.org and wetati, W-E-T-A-T-I, stands for we are empowered to achieve the possible, right? Think about that, academy.org. And my other platform is margaretspeaks.com. I've been speaking and training. I do diplomatic training. I mean, I did one with the, the Ghana Embassy where I do uh, um, diplomatic etiquette. So some of them need to understand how to handle and treat people. So from that to everything you can imagine in personal development and business training, all of that I do. And I have a lot of curriculum ready. All I need is strategic partners who are about the same mind that we come together, collaborate and partner so we can change the world together. And let me tell you guys the greatest news that I know there is enough for everybody. So some of us that are holding on tight and they die with their talent, but they think somebody's gonna take some from them. That's why they're dying slowly. I would rather have a growing pain than a dying pain. Because when you are growing and in pain, you're going somewhere. So if they can, they wanna reach out to me in Margaret at margaretspeaks.com. And I'm looking forward to sharing more. I got so much more, this is nothing. Because I've been able to do with a whole lot of folks really. So I'm hoping that we can work together and collaborate in any way you guys see. I was the only woman that was invited by President Kikweta of Tanzania to address the Congress with the, about the women empowerment and economics of the youth in Tanzania and Zanzibar. So I've been around, I've done it all. I just need the platform so that I, we can help a whole lot of more people together. No one person can do it, but collectively we can change the world and get what belongs to us. Wow. Hey, Doc, Doc, you got one minute because uh, we, we're down to about the last two minutes of the show. I'm talking about Dr. Hall to respond. Yes, sir. What well, this is about in the ambassador and her pilgrimage. Listen, when you have, you know, the power that we have by being owners of our own business and those things and teaching about entrepreneurship, this seat at this table, I can say you have my support fully. Um, I can tell you by Doc and I speaking that there are platforms that's being shared now that you can do this, you know, and share this abundantly. So I'll take that and say, let's just talk afterwards. I can share some other things about how the financial wealth aspects part of this, that God has opened up his kingdom resources for his kingdom people to build the kingdom. Amen. And so the time is now. Amen. So you guys have a wonderful day. In my one minute, Doc, I hope I can cut your timeline off. No, we do. <laughs> and you know, I, I tell you, uh, we're down to the last minute of the show. And uh, first of all, uh, uh, Dr. Directy, uh, yes, we have to do part two. I did not get past three questions. <laughs> <laughs> but we got, we got to do part two. This was so powerful. This was so powerful. I want to thank uh, uh, the ambassador, uh, Dr. Directy, for taking the time to come on, on the show. We will do part two. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, my great friend, Dr. Eric Hall, for you know chiming in and, and being part of this great conversation. I got to thank uh, my great uh, executive producing co-host, uh, Dr. Michelle Cooley, for putting this together. Most importantly, I'd like to thank our viewers and our listeners for taking time 
taking time to tune into the James Cooley Show. It's your life uh, every day. And like always, I want everybody to leave here knowing that we are the table and that in order to maintain the table, be at the table, you got to dream big, think big, and be big about everything that you do. It's your life. I'm Dr. James Cooley. We'll see you same time tomorrow.